Okay, next day. We already have our plan. We already mapped out what we're gonna do, what size ducks we're gonna use where. The returns, I haven't written those down, but I'm gonna put two 14 inch returns. Okay, sonrisa, por favor. Now we're putting our dampers, every supply. That's its dampers, kind of staging everything right here. We're ready to rock and roll. So the way that I install my start colors is I just bend a few of the dovetails, not all of them. I know some guys like to do every other dovetail, but I just bend a few of them. And then uh, the, that way I have more dovetails holding up the insulation on the inside, making sure that it doesn't come loose in the future years. And now I like to apply a generous amount, I'd say, of duct sealer around the star colors. And now it's time to install this elbow for the return that's going to be going there because the roof pitches down right there, right above the unit. You can't tell because of the wide angle lens as much, but there's a that's where the roof pitches down. So I want to make sure that the duct doesn't get kinked in the future. So now I like to uh, put a a metal strap uh, to hold up the return plenum, one on each corner. And then after that, I'm gonna install some seismic straps underneath it. So right here, I just wanted to show you how I install my seismic straps. It's pretty simple. I don't think it needs explaining. Just put um, like three screws underneath the plenum and then another like two or three screws to the nearest uh, ceiling joist or, or the platform because this, my platform is secured so I can I can screw them to the platform as well. And just a real quick reminder to please hit that like button and if you're new to my channel don't forget to subscribe and remember to hit that bell icon otherwise you won't get notified whenever I put out a new video. There you go, the return plenum is all strapped up and also has the seismic straps underneath it. So now I got this 10 inch duct that I'm gonna crawl with. It's a belly crawl to where it needs to go. It's right there in that little cave that I showed you in the beginning in part one. So whenever possible, especially in this situation here, um, I connect the duct to the elbow. Um, where I have more room. That way when I crawl in there, all I have to worry about is screwing the elbow to the ceiling box, uh, taping it and insulating it. I think one of the, <laughs> the worst part of, of this kind of work is uh, having to crawl on your belly on two by fours with a tray full of tools and material like ducks or in this case fiberglass and then you can only crawl so far then you have to shove your <laughs> your uh, your material and your tools in front of you and then crawl a little bit more and it's just it's so time consuming and so tiring and you can't take the mask off because you can even see right there all that fiberglass just floating around Okay, so here you can see the drain pan's already been secured to the supply plenum, and then you can see the seismic straps on the supply plenum as well as the ones on each corner that hold it all up. So now I have to go down underneath the house. Look, there's my new van. <laughs> Wasn't new to me, it's not new, but it's new to me. And look at the whole gas line situation. I got some stuff here, ready to go. Just in case, uh, if I can start connecting it right now, I will. I also want to check on the vent pipe. Look, nice, huh? Cool, cool. See, you can tell they were eating fruit. <laughs> Looks like they were eating figs. This is not going to be fun. I'm gonna look for craters first. 
So here I decided to turn the camera around so that you can get a, a good idea of just how tight it was and how difficult it was crawling underneath that house. So whenever I crawl into a crawl space, the first thing that I have to do is look around for some critters because once in a while I've, I've ran into uh, skunks before or they could be um, some rats or a possum or something in there and um, when it's this tight it's really hard to like run away <laughs> so you definitely want to take a good look around you don't know there's a snake or whatever you know I haven't ran into any snakes but still I don't want to take a chance of uh, bumping into anything with sharp teeth so underneath the house I noticed that uh, there's two floor heaters or floor slash wall heaters you know those floor heaters are in between the wall and they're both sharing the same vent pipe sadly because I was planning on using uh, that as a shaft to run my drain lines and my um, line set and my gas line but uh, I'm gonna have to go with plan B which is to go up on through the line set cover I wanted to use that shaft but, but I can't because that one they still want to use that wall heater so I'm gonna have to get the gas from this floor heater and run it out I don't know, somewhere around here in this area. Probably here, and then go up and come up to the side of the house into the attic. Oh, there's a tiny dirt out here. A little tiny. Get my gas from right here and disconnect this floor heater. It's already been switched off by the gas heater, has already been switched off by the gas company. And uh, you can see the valve right there is off, so I'll take the gas from here and then run track pipe as that flexible gas pipe. I'm just gonna run that up into the attic together with the line set to the side of the house. That's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so it looks like this is pretty good. So, looks like the gas comes in three quarter to this T, so that's good. Alright, so now we're ready for our track pipe. Valves in place. like I'm gonna have to go from there and come this way and then out the side of the house to go up into the attic one time Okay. Oh, we have some denser. Right there. That's where I'm gonna come in with the line set. Track pipe and the line set 
I'm not sure if I'll do that today because they're saying that it's going to rain. So I'm probably going to have to come back here when it's not raining. Now we're back in the attic. The fun area. It's time to start connecting the ducts. Right now I'm going to connect the return air ducts. I just have to put uh, one more elbow right here. No, con razón, está la velocidad más baja. So after securing the elbow with some screws, I tape it to seal it. I'm gonna use these. Uh, uh, penduit ties with that yellow penduit gun that you saw right there to tighten up those penduits. This metal strap is, um, I like to put that first, it makes it easier to connect the duct to the elbow rather than throwing it over my shoulder like I used to do. So I decided to uh, strap the return air ducts up high on the attic ceiling just to keep them out of the way for when servicing the furnace. So just a, a funny story, uh, my helper is asking me uh, what can he use to get rid of the itch from the fiberglass because when you get it on you um, it doesn't come off in the shower, you still continue to itch for days. So. <laughs> I'm telling him that there's, I haven't found anything that works, but uh, for him to let me know if he finds something, and he's telling me that he can't, he doesn't believe me. I told him, yeah, yeah. The, the best thing I can tell you is that after a few, maybe weeks or months, or you know, you, you'll get used to it to the point to where you'll learn to ignore it, and he doesn't believe me. So that's what uh, conversation we were having. But I. Uh, sadly, I can't uh, play all the audio on this video because I was playing music, which I never do. But this time around, I was actually playing music in the attic. And uh, so a lot of the audio is unusable because I'd get a copyright strike. And there you go. There's your two returns suspended. So here's the handy dandy hole cutter, can't do it without it. <laughs> it's a pretty good um, hole cutter. Uh, your drill has to have high speed in order for it to be the most effective. I usually use an electric drill, but right now I'm using this, this rigid. It's a, it does the job, it's fast enough. Um, so I'm going to cut the hole in the back for one of the main trunks that's going to go and supply uh, part of the bedrooms along with the kitchen so at first I, I spin it around just to make sure that the hole is is where I want it to be it's either centered or wherever it is that I want it to be um, before I drill that first hole which is the one that is going to uh, after that you're gonna push the little adjustable uh, pin or whatever um, after you make that first initial hole. And there you go, you see? It's, it works pretty good. You have to um, tilt it a little bit in order for it to, to start cutting. Otherwise, it, it won't cut. So after trying many different brands of, uh, of duct sealers, this one's my favorite. It's uh, the one that I started using because of my boss, that's what they used to use. Um, and I tried many of the new ones that came out and I think that this one is still my favorite. So one of the things that I try to do when I install supply ducts or return ducts is I always try to keep them as out of the way as much as possible. 
Um, sometimes I'll, I'll sacrifice a little bit of the comfort of being able to access the furnace. Uh, but as long as I got good airflow. But then also I've done the opposite. Sometimes I'm like, oh, well, there's no other choice. I have the duct, you know, it's going to have to be kinked here a little bit in order to be able to gain access to the furnace. So it's kind of on a case by case basis. But if you just remember to keep them as much out of the way as possible while still not affecting airflow, then you'll be good. So uh, you might have noticed that the duct sealer was still fresh when I connected that duct which is why I'm putting more duct sealer on top of that just to make sure it doesn't leak because after I'm done with this job it's going to be tested by a hearse raider they pressurize the ducts to check for leakage uh, has to be within their acceptable range and they also check the refrigerant level to make sure that it's charged correctly a hearse stands, stands for home energy rating system and I'll post a link in the description if you want to learn more about that so as usual I try to uh, when I cut the supply hose I try to leave a cushion of air in the front. Um, it's not too big, but I try to leave somewhat of a cushion so that it will help to balance the air pressure to all the rest of the supply ducts. 